Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a great time at DevOps. So I'm Jasha Bubakar from Developer Relations Engineering at Google, and I currently focus on open source libraries and tools for the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, prior to that, I've been mostly working as a backend Java developer for over 10 years. So what we're talking about today is primarily how we're making life really simple for Spring developers. And before I get started, can I get a show of hands on how familiar you might be with Spring? OK, almost a large part of the crowd. Spring Boot, same hands. Spring Cloud, OK, half or more of the crowd. So, so what I've seen with, uh, as a Java developer, too, with the way Spring kind of got traction within the Java community is that we all started really writing code different, right? So when with Spring, it was primarily through annotations. It really simplified the way you communicate with databases or with messaging systems. You were not writing as much boilerplate code. And then came along Spring Boot, which said, oh, you don't even need the XML configuration, right? It's like spring for spring. And production-ready microservices, these weren't like an afterthought, but you could actually build them with like a simple Spring Boot starter. And with Spring Cloud, it's kind of taking Spring Boot into, I guess, what you would call a cloud-native framework, which is now you have all these microservices. How do you make sure they all are coordinated? How do they communicate? How do you make sure it's not a black box in terms of the deployment? And that's exactly where the Spring Cloud um, set of libraries really comes in. And where we want to help at Google Cloud Platform is really help you leverage all that kind of integrations into bringing your code to Google Cloud Platform. And this is, we just released the first milestone um, last week, and it's on GitHub. And what we have is like a whole bunch of integrations, which I'll walk through some of them in this talk, is to really help you bring that code with minimal amount that you have to write in terms of any boilerplate. Well, I guess I would say not even any boilerplate. And um, run it on GCP. So. This, these are a couple of the integrations that we have available today. So Google Cloud PubSub is Google Cloud Platform's messaging middleware platform. And with the current integration, it's, and I'll probably, I'll try to cover that in this talk. I may run out of time. But that's basically, it's really easy to just publish a message or receive a message using Google Cloud PubSub. Google Cloud SQL is the fully managed SQL, which comes in the two flavors, MySQL and Postgres. And again, with this integration, it automatically wires that up as a data source for you, and that's all you need to take advantage of it. Google Cloud Storage, if you're considering it for any of your blob storage, binary data, images, again, it makes it as easy as just annotation driven, and you're using Google Cloud Storage. Google Cloud Sleuth, um, I don't know how many of you might be familiar with Google Cloud Sleuth, but it's, it's a way of, um, it, it is actually tightly integrated with a Zipkin server. And what it usually does is that you can trace, it's like a distributed tracing, so you can trace all the requests that hit your multiple microservices and determine the latencies. So if you had service A calling service B and C, you could actually look at the latencies over time. And what we do with this integration is, with Stackdriver Trace is Google Cloud Platform's distributed tracing platform. And so you don't have to run your own Zipkin server. You can just leverage this integration and send all your uh, tracing requests to uh, Google Cloud Platform. The other one is Google Cloud Runtime Configurator. And with that, it's again managed configuration for your applications. So the Runtime Configurator is a managed configuration server. And what it allows you to do is to, again, you don't have to run your own configuration server. You can just leverage that. And you have dynamic configuration in your applications. And definitely, more in the works. Again, it's an open source uh, work, so we welcome co committers as well. And what I'm going to, basically, it's a tools in action talk. So I, what I really want to do is really showcase to you how you would leverage some of these integrations. What we'll do is basically, well, I, I just figured cat pictures will keep your attention. But uh, we will upload some cat images to a Google Cloud Storage bucket. We will save some cat information as a, like a profile information in Google Cloud SQL. We'll trace the requests using the integration that I mentioned with Stackdriver Trace. And finally, and hopefully, if uh, time permits, we will deploy it to Kubernetes, which will be running at the Google Container Engine. 
Oops, sorry, let's... Okay. So... Here, I'm actually gonna... I don't know how big... Okay, so I don't know if you can read out there, but what I'm gonna walk you through is actually um, an application that leverages this integration. But before I start, let me first... Pull. Okay, so Google Cloud Platform, the console, I don't know if, um, how many are familiar with the Google Cloud Platform? Okay, like 50% of the crowd maybe. So, so Google Cloud Platform, so the console is a great way to manage your um, services via console. And here, just because of it's a really short talk, I've set up, we've set ourselves with a project. It's also already set up with uh, billing, so that's covered. And what we're going to do is actually go ahead and create a bucket. And again, I didn't trust Wi-Fi, so the bucket is already created. As you see, it's empty. And even creating a bucket is as simple as type in the name. You choose whether it's multi-regional or regional. In our case, we chose a regional because we're just planning to use it um, for a regional application. And that's it. So I'm not going to do that. Same thing for the SQL. So again, I have an instance just ready for our demo, but I want to make sure you understand how easy it is to even create the instance. So you get to choose two flavors. If you, uh, so what you would do is choose a MySQL instance, provide your ID. In our case, I've actually generated one without a password. I know that's not great. So please don't do that for your production applications. And so we have those two ready. And I'll, um, one more thing is credentials and authentication on Google Cloud Platform. What we have is the concept of what are called service accounts. So when you are running your application locally, what we encourage you to do is actually here, you would go in and create what is called a service account. And what you, well, you can sort of narrow it down to the specific permissions you might need, which are called the IAM permissions. And this allows you to actually, if I were to go here, this create key will allow me to, so for instance, this is the, the account that I've already created for this demo. This will allow me to actually create a JSON key that I can download to my machine and use that local, in my local development environment. So we, you will see an example of that as I walk through that um, example that uses the Google Cloud Storage integration. So you can't really see up there, but we're going to be looking at that GCS um, module. And to start, so here's the, the POM. So you want to get started using Google Cloud Storage. What is like the one thing you need to get started with, right? So this is basically, if you go to Spring Initializer, generate a web app, um, that's all this is. And the only thing that's mainly added here is the bill of materials from Spring Cloud GCP. This is a great way to manage your dependency so you don't have to really specify the versions for the different starters you use from the uh, Spring Cloud GCP. So once that's in, as you'll see, we have like the Spring Cloud GCP Google Cloud Storage starter. That, and like I mentioned before, this is a currently it's a milestone release. And so what's required is the milestone repository that you have to provide additionally in your pump. And let me show you the, so when we talked about the credentials and when you run locally, we provide two options. So one is you set an environment variable pointing to that credentials file that I just mentioned. The other one is within Spring Cloud GCP, you can configure it as, um, app, uh, as a property here, application property here, pointing to your credentials file. Now, here's the application. As you'll notice, this is sort of the key part about how we're using Google Cloud Storage here. So the GS colon slash is the prefix that we're using. And, in, and basically, by including the starter, the resource is auto-wired to talk to that particular bucket. And within this particular, the handler that we're doing, is, it's, it's not a really smart one, but it just takes an image URL, caches it within that bucket by the same file name. So as you'll see here, what we, we are able to do is basically create a relative path with, and basically treat it as a resource. And you are not looking at any boilerplate code here. That's sort of the magic of it. Let's run that. Hopefully that runs. Sorry. 
There you go. The okay, the application is up. We will upload this image. Can you see that? All right. Uh, All right, so we provide just the URL, and what we expect to see is actually the GS URL of the resource that we just uploaded. So if you go back into our console, that's where, there you go. So we have our image that just got uploaded using the integration. So that was as simple as that. So now let's move on to SQL then, right? So. Just similar to the exact one, and I think it's, um, again, you import, you import the bill of materials here. Here, I, I will walk through the different dependencies we're including. So we include the SQL starter. And what's great is that it works well with, the, uh, with JDBC as well as if you want to leverage JPA. So in this case, we do want, want to save, uh, I guess, cat entities in. So we're leveraging the JPA starter. You'll also see the, the REST data start, the data REST starter here, and that's just to allow for well, the data REST uh, just gives, if you have a repository class, that can automatically give you all the REST APIs associated with it. So again, walking through, I'll also make sure we cover the application properties. So this is all you are actually doing to leverage Cloud SQL within your application. So you're providing the instance connection name, which again, you can, uh, let's go to SQL. Here is the instance connection name that you see there. And the you create a database name, which I probably, I think I missed to cover that, but you have the databases section that you just create a database here. Like I said, we are using root here, which is sort of the default, and we didn't provide a password. So yes, not secure. But um, again, so you can also, uh, by default, it is using MySQL, but you can easily switch that to Postgres as well using that uh, property. And uh, just like before, we provided the, the credentials associated with it. And let's see, let's go to the classes, right? So here's our Pojo, that's the, the cat, which has been annotated with the entity. And these are the fields that we're looking at. So we have the ID, the name, um, URL, and GSURI which is sort of the GS URL that we will use when we upload it uh, to cloud storage, which is not being used right now. And then here is the simple, the rest, uh, the, uh, the rest data starter that I talked about, which effectively, you don't really need to provide any implementation methods and you're able to really leverage all the rest APIs to access any resource that is stored in this repository. So you'll also see the schema SQL that I've introduced, which is which will auto-create the table if this table does not exist, and just some sample data that we will be uploading into the uh, database. So yeah, and the cool thing about the starter is really that you don't need to, um, it, it uses a proxy, and so what that means, an SSL proxy too. So what that means is you really don't need to whitelist any uh, IPs for access. It auto handles that, and it is all done over uh, SSL. Oh, sorry, I think we missed something. Oh, stop that, it's using the same port. All right. So now let's look at a, so like I mentioned, the REST repository. So if you wanted to um, add data, what you're doing is basically sending a POST request to uh, that, the CATS, the CATS is sort of the URL that uh, comes, sorry, the, um, the URL that comes in from the repository REST resource. And let's try out that sample request. So if you wanted to see all the available handlers, let's say, so as you can see, it's actually loaded the data that we just put in. And if you wanted to add more data, so as you can see, it actually returns you um, the actual um, URL to that resource that just got added. So cool, so that was Cloud SQL. And that was all you really needed to do. You're running locally and you're talking to Cloud SQL. 
And now let's let's kind of put everything that we did together so that we can figure out how we would trace um, the, the, the request through uh, stack driver trace, as I mentioned. So what we're doing here is basically, let, let me first go to the POM, that'll be easier again. So we have again the dependencies, we have everything that we had before, we've just now the storage, the SQL. We also include now the starter trace dependency. So that's, with that said, again, it's the same set of classes that we have, the cat, the repository rest, and what we had here is basically, again, it's the same, um, the handler that we had for upload. Let me walk you through what this demo one does. It's, it's basically, it's our way of just mocking uh, requests to, as, as if they were to different microservices. So for instance, what this is doing is when you get a request, it's actually sending that to the upload URL, but instead of calling the method directly, what we're doing is kind of initiating um, a, a request to that endpoint. And the same goes for actually adding that data to Cloud SQL. So, we're, so what we would expect as when we, for instance, when you see that new span of demo here, what we're trying to say is, I want to track this request, and at the same time, I, I, I'm like that uh, tag or that span will actually be captured within these requests that happen to the uh, upload uh, URL as well as the, the cat's endpoint. And for those who might not know the span, it's basically a way of saying that it's a, it's, um, it's a unit of um, like an RPC call. So you, you would treat this as um, a span that you can tag and which I will walk through when we run, we can actually view that in the um, stack driver trace. So, um, Resources, I wanted to make sure I covered. Um, so these are properties specific to trace. Now these are just, um, the fact is we, uh, by default, we only track 0.1% of the requests. And with these, we're, this is primarily just for testing. We're just making sure that every request is traced. And there's always also a delay in, the, in sending it to a stack driver. And again, just for this demo, we're setting it to a very low value. So let's try again, stop the previous application. Let's do And what we'll do is basically send a post request there. Applications up. So we're sending a post request to the that URL, which we intend to trace. Okay, that did add the data in. Let's go into the console. So here's okay. Sorry. Yeah, the trace list. As you can see, I've been playing around with this. All right, so as you'll see here, so this is actually the request that we just made. And what you see here is actually the span, the demo that we created. And it's, it's able to actually provide you the latency for the upload and the cats. And what's really cool about this is that it's not just like on an, uh, you are able to sort of view it over a one day or three day, so forth. You can actually also create reports, which I know people do for, on a, uh, if you want to sort of monitor it on an, um, what is this week versus another week and so forth. It's really great in tracking that kind of regression and latencies. All right, so we trace the application locally and we've kind of played around with the integrations. I think it's time to deploy the application. So in the interest of time, and I see I have only 10 minutes left, I've kind of fast forwarded to a couple of steps, but I just wanna walk you through it. So. G Cloud is basically, if you're using Google Cloud Platform, I highly um, encourage you to install it on your local machine. What it helps is that you have a command line interface to most of the Google Cloud Platform services. You can also even try out G Cloud. So this, what you see there is a Google Cloud shell and G Cloud is actually auto installed there. So just, it's only, I'm using it locally only because we're trying to deploy the code that's running locally. Otherwise you can easily use it from the cloud shell. So, Another, so again, we mentioned that we're gonna deploy it to container engine. 
which so the cube control is uh, we're installing it through G Cloud. And then, so again, something I fast forward to was, you know, so basically creating the cluster that we're going to deploy to. And I've created with three nodes. I'll just walk you through where that is. Let's go to engine, clusters. So here's our cluster that's running with three uh, nodes. And then you have the node version. Again, this is super easy to create either through G Cloud or even through the console. So I have that ready. And again, my fast forward has in also meant that what we do after that is we need, a, a, let me actually review the Docker file. So what we're trying to do is basically pack up this application that we have now into uh, a deploy, into a, into a container, right? So, what we, so a very simple Docker file here. So we're just using the OpenJDK 8. And then we have the, uh, the, the app, the jar basically of our application. And then that's the entry point. And going back to the deployment. All right. So I've kind of, again, fast forward because uh, pushing a, the image or creating it right now would mean you kind of waiting on getting the JDK um, layer in and so forth. So what we have already is the CATS demo available. So what this does is we're building the, the tag. We're pushing that image out to the Google Cloud, uh, the container registry, which again, let me just make sure. So here, this, as you see it, the CATS demo, it already has the, um, the image. And now what we're going to do is basically, I'll walk you through what, what it, so if you, if you want to deploy an application that uses the Google Cloud Platform APIs, this is sort of the key point that you sort of need to be aware of on Kubernetes, is making sure that the credentials are available to the APIs. And what we do here is basically mount the credentials. So we create a secret with Kubernetes. And then what we'll do is basically mount that as a volume. And then what you see here, OK, I'll, Google Cloud key will be the, um, the secret that we create. And then what we're doing is basically mounting it as Google, Google credentials. And then the mount, basically, it's being mounted to the path war secrets Google. And the Google Cloud application credentials will be set to this war secret Google, Google Cloud key.json. You'll see where that Google Cloud key.json comes in from when we create the key. So let's go to, OK. Go back here. So see there, we're actually creating a key, which is named Google Cloud Key. But we also present the path. Uh, here is the Google Cloud Key.json that I showed earlier. So we created the key. And now let's, OK, here's the deployment YAML where we reference the image, references the cats demo v1. So. YAML, that will actually get our containers up and running. All right, pods. So as you see, it's, it says it's running, but with applications, you have a quick way to even look at the logs. So I look up that that's a pod name that I'm seeing there. And there you go. So you actually have the application coming up. See the endpoints, and there, your application is up. So there are multiple ways to actually now access the service. And in the again, in the interest of time, I'm actually just going to cover how you would just forward that to a local uh, uh, um, to a local port, and then you can just test that directly. You can also create a service around this, which is uh, through like those comments down here where you would create a type of load balancer. So effectively, it assigns an external IP that you can then use to access that particular um, service. So let's try the pod forward, forward, forward. OK. 
okay and then so actually we should be able to just call the same thing because it's it is localhost cool so that that worked and actually you would see it the the handling connection 48080 out here and effectively we did connect to the service so how easy was that cool all right so let me get back to i have i have four minutes but let's see we'll make it quick um, so that, that was about like, you know, you, you have, you can leverage these integrations. That's all it takes to really run against Google Cloud Platform services. Now, if you wanted to use PubSub, again, very similar, as you'd see, you just include the bill of materials, you include the dependency, you use like an auto wired class, and then you can just send, I've just shown a message to send a message, but then you, you can receive as well. So again, the managed configuration service, you have the, the starter for the configuration. You just provide like an out configuration name and an environment profile name. You set the gcloud is actually the tool we use to manage the configuration. And after that, it's an auto-wired auto -fire, auto configuration value that you use. And that was it. And uh, again, we're on GitHub. Like uh, the, the reference documentation is really great. I encourage you to you know go in and try it. We also have code challenges we're doing right outside this room, and they do have a lot of these integrations. So I would encourage you to you know really try that out. And again, please you know request features, bookmark it, and it's a first milestone release. But we're really looking forward to having more. So thank you.